Joey Logano, your defending champion. So, Jamie, what can we expect from him in terms of a repeat? The one thing that, that I caught on from, from Joey Logano and Paul Wolf last year was that you were just always chasing something. And, and one week they would be good, and, and I would talk to Paul Wolf two weeks later, and he'd be like, ah, oh, we're just missing it right now. We don't have it. And I'm like, you just, you just won two weeks ago. What don't you have? Logano, I mean, in the past five or six years, he's been the guy uh, that, that's been a threat for the championship in all of those years. Coming off of the championship probably has a little bit, a, a little bit more confidence than normal, so he'll be a threat. Certainly to start the season, Larry, we know when you end strong, you start strong. Yeah, if he bottled that confidence he had going to Phoenix, woe be into the competitors. I'm telling you, I never saw anybody with that much confidence. While Joey Logano won won his second Cup Series championship, if you've been watching long enough, you knew what was coming the next year. The following meme pretty much explains it. In even years going back to 2014, he's made the championship four, while in every odd year, he hasn't. But that doesn't mean every season's been a bad one. Besides 2017, when he missed the playoffs, he's made it in every other odd year, and also finished at least top 10 in points. Would 2023 be a repeat? or the same old stuff. The season started off with Denny Hamlin giving him the finger, but I think Joey Logano was more concerned about barely losing the Daytona 500. Even though he lost, Logano and his new hair took home the most points. They followed that up with a top 10 at Fontana and the pole for Las Vegas. I don't know who I'm picking to come out ahead on this one. They're all pretty darn good. Gonna get tight. Oh, oh. Caution, caution. Logano slides to the grass down the front straight away as caution waves. Sure did. He's going to be frustrated with that. He had the run. He has the position. But the hardest thing is to be that three-wide situation that Keselowski was in. Aw, poor little kid. Even he must know the odd year curse. But anyways, Logano didn't have very good long run speed. But for Atlanta, it would be a totally different story. The Fords were in a class of their own. And Logano led a race high 140 laps. Towards the very end, he was able to put himself in the right position and led the lap that counted the most. You're all clear, checker flag. Hell yeah, good job. Woo! What a car, guys. This one's been haunting me for 15 years. I've wanted to win here so bad. It's the 32nd career win for Joey Logano and his first at Atlanta. This is where I cut my teeth growing up as a racer. There's so many memories right here and dreaming of being in victory lane. It all kind of came full circle. And my dad running out there at the start finish line to, to see me after the race was pretty cool. Even though he made the playoffs, that win was followed up with very inconsistent performances. Over the next 10 races, Logano had two finishes outside the top 20 and three outside the top 30. Joey says, forget it. I'm go oh, he's oh. turned. He is turned. Logano in the wall, LaJoy and Stenhouse bring the caution out for the sixth time. Oh, Logano's day finally comes to an end the hard way. Does it look right like that right was... front? Is that right rear or right front down? I thought he, the right he'd been rear courting there. right fronts all day, and maybe they made a huge... Nope, They're there you down. go. Yeah. I didn't hear a blow. Oh, Larson's around. In front of the field, this now is going to be big. Big pile of Logano uh, gives, gives him more. Just couldn't get low enough soon enough just nowhere to go. The first half of the season was very inconsistent, not just for Logano, but Team Penske all around. At one point, he was 13th in the regular season points, but hey, he made the top 75 greatest drivers, so at least his fans could celebrate that. But don't worry, towards the end of the first half and in the beginning of the second half, he was starting to pick it up again. Three top fives during that span and was able to get back in the top 10 in points, but still, he had his moments. This is funny how the reigning Cup Series champion nearly ran into a former Formula One champion. Anyways, Pocono was looking very promising until it wasn't. After leading 21 of the first 48 laps, Logano got wrecked on a restart. Not only did he DNF, but he gave us one of the greatest sound bites in NASCAR history. Flat tires. You want to push I got or flat tires. Flat tires. I need a push. Four, Four flats. Four flats. I need a push. A little hustle. Come on, tell me! Hook it up! Hook the fucker up! Hook the fucking truck! 
truck to it. Put the truck to the fucking thing. Come here. Hook the thing up. We're pushing. We're pushing. Come here, come here. I can't drive it. I need a tow truck. A tow. You want to be hooked? Follow me. In. Hook. Hook it up. Lift it up. Hook it up. Speaking of wrecking on restarts, just a few weeks later at Indianapolis, Logano was involved in another wreck. May I present to you the Joey Logano Stop Running Over People on a Road Course Impossible Challenge. And restart for these drivers. Look out more intense. Oh, oh contact the 22 into the back of his teammate, Ryan Blaney. Logano turns around and we'll see if everybody is able to get around him. He gets the going and we stay green. Look, even though he's been inconsistent, it's the playoffs. Anything can happen. While most had him making the round of eight, myself and other fans weren't sipping the Kool-Aid. On the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, I predicted that Joey Logano would be out of the round of 16. And through the first two races, it looked like he was about to prove me wrong. After a top 10 at Darlington, and getting some stage points, he sat nearly 20 points above the cut line. But a bad run at Kansas nearly had him on the outside looking in. But wait, why is he running up front? Because of a strategy call on the final restart, Logano was able to get a top five finish, putting him just 12 points above the cut line. They got lucky, but eventually their performance would come back to bite them. With their season on the line, they were a non-factor at Bristol. But at the beginning of the final stage, they were six points to the good. But sometimes when you're running in the back, trouble finds you. And around goes the seven of LaJoy. Up the track, into the, oh, big oh. contact. The Newman 22. gets him in the 51, and yes, Logano also involved. Big, Big damage. damage to the left rear. Yep, yeah, there's some bent broken on the left rear of that 22. Talk to us. Left rear's down. Looks bent. Gonna have yeah, I got hit pretty hard on the left rear. Definitely down. It is broke. Now, can they fix it? No, they cannot. And just like that, Logano's season was over. No championship repeat, and could end up being only the second season where he finishes outside the top 10 in points. His 2017 and 2023 seasons are nearly identical. The only difference is his 2017 win was encumbered. Fortunately, this year he locked himself into the playoffs early, but if you've been keeping up with the trend, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Joey Logano's 2023 season will forever be remembered as a championship hangover. And once again, that'll do it for another video. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Black Flags Matter. Catch you next time.